Welcome, valued researcher. If you have been instructed this training, it means that you will soon be working in close proximity with a creature designated SCP-096. 096 is a tall humanoid being that a majority of the time will remain docile. However, there is one thing you must remember. You must never, under any circumstances, view it. The site is experiencing multiple Keter and Euclid level containment breaches. Full site lockdown initiated. Take a look at this image. Does it look familiar? What about this one? If you were paying any attention to the intro, you definitely wouldn't want me to unblare this one. Welcome to the SCP Foundation, known for securing thousands of entities and researching many horrific yet intriguing locations for everyone's viewing pleasure. The SCP Foundation aims to protect the populace from the unnatural, unexplained, and overall unworldly phenomena, documenting them all into one database. Okay, for those who don't know, the SCP Foundation has stood the test of time as one of the most disturbing and influential horror fandoms of all time creating many abominations that could kill you by purely looking at it, or in some cases, not looking at it. SCPs are of course fictional, but I'd be lying if I never wondered if I could survive if this weren't the case. What if I was a D-Class dealing with a breach of 106? Could I outsmart 079, or even find a way to kill the hard-to-kill reptile? Me personally? Eh. But you could be different. So today, I'm taking a logical approach as to surviving not only a site-wide containment breach, but some of the unspeakable horrors beyond the walls of the facility, while throwing them into this convenient little tier list that I made, ranked from impossible to survive to easy to survive. And as usual, I'm Mr. Mirage, and this is a logical approach to an SCP containment breach. Now, as mentioned in the backrooms video, which I suppose was kind of foreshadowing at this point, the SCP Foundation data logs are massive, containing thousands of SCPs, so of course there is no way I'll be able to cover them all. But what exactly is an SCP? Well, SCP itself, formerly known as Special Containment Procedure and later rebranded to Secure, Contain, Protect, is the umbrella term for any creature or location that is unnatural or unexplained by science. It could be a hateful flesh that has been quarantined in the middle of Russia, or it could be simply a box of tissues that evokes way too much nostalgia for my taste, or even an adorable blob of slime that gives you the unnecessary urge to immediately punt it into the nearest brick wall. Really? Just me, huh? <clears throat> SCP would originally start out as a random horror post on 4chan, and after a lot of various relocations, would find its home on Wikidot. This post consisted of a horrific statue-like creature known by 173, one that moved at inhuman speeds, able to snap your neck in a fraction of a second. The only saving grace was the fact that it was unable to move while being watched. This image would turn to become many, leading to the development of games such as one about an infinite stairwell and the more popular, the story of Site-19 one of many locations that the SCP Foundation uses to contain these abominations, keeping them secret from the general public. However, something would go terribly wrong here, and every single SCP would come to all escape at once. Now, this nightmare scenario sounds like something impossible to survive, but with the existence of SCP-173's glaring weakness, it gave me an idea that maybe every SCP had a weakness that could be exploited and used to maybe survive this catastrophic event. Now, we are all probably familiar with the story of the SCP containment breach. You play as a D-Class inmate, in the middle of servicing SCP-173, when suddenly, the door behind you refuses the command of the guards outside. This is due to the sentient computer known by 079 gaining control over the door controls of the facility and using it to release every single SCP possible. But anyone who has played the game knows how it ends. In this video, we are doing something different. Rather than being in the perspective of a D-Class, we are looking into the alternate perspective. Site-19 along with D-Class contains researchers, guards, along with the rare occurrence of higher-ups such as the O5 Council. Site-19 consists of three main zones, being light containment, heavy containment, and the entrance zone each containing their own threats and or blockage to the player escaping, with side zones such as the storage level, the research zone, and the maintenance tunnels. Since researchers vary due to the level of clearance, 
we will be using the assumption that we are a level 3 researcher, which is about in the middle. As usual, it would be the smartest to first figure out the biggest threats when attempting a facility exit, midst a containment breach. Starting out with non-SCP threats, primarily the armed guards and the more elite nine-tailed fox. As a researcher, you will be essentially less of a target, along with many of the guards quickly falling to escaping SCPs, and therefore will be most likely to have a shifted focus. But to guarantee safety from the guards, it'd be best to find the nearest guard's corpse and wear their uniform. No guard is going to be able to wait long enough to tell that you're actually a researcher, especially when creatures like SCP-173 seem to be making quick work of most of the other escaping members in the facility. An escape from Site-19 will rely primarily on the ability to navigate through each of the sections while evading the SCPs that primarily roam each one. Site-19 is documented to hold upwards of 50 SCPs, majority being safe or Euclid, meaning easy to contain or relatively easy to contain. But I'm going to narrow it down to the 5 biggest threats that an escaping researcher is most likely to encounter. SCP-096 is the most simple of these, being as there isn't much more to it other than keeping your eyes off of its face, and if you catch it roaming in the halls, approaching it from behind and placing a bag over its head, to avoid an accidental viewing of its face in the future, and therefore a quick and brutal end. Following 096, we are likely to encounter familiar voices echoing through the halls. Someone obviously needs your help, perhaps even someone you knew. However, this is purely an illusion, one that could easily end in your death. Dealing with SCP-939 isn't as simple as a single entity. They are a pack of dangerous creatures that roam the lower levels of Site-19. Known as the creatures with many voices, they can sound like someone crying for help or screaming in pain, so it is best to not try to assist anybody as they may very well be one of these creatures waiting around the corner. 939s contain extremely odd biology, having no vital organs and biological means a corpse. Finding a way to kill such creatures would be an incredibly difficult task, especially when time is extremely limited. But what most people don't realize is these creatures' sounds can ultimately be used against them, and with maintaining a quiet movement can be used to pinpoint exactly where these creatures are, and avoid them entirely. And since these creatures will often ring out vocal lines like a sort of beacon, you will constantly know how to navigate around these creatures and not run right into their jaws. Continuing past these nightmarish imitations, you realize that you have to find a higher ranking keycard to progress forward. You remember a fellow doctor with said clearance was in the process of studying an odd SCP, one that is truly ancient, dating back past medieval Europe. You progress down an elevator, and it's just as you thought. An abandoned level 4 access keycard is on the counter. On your way out, you notice a number on the wall, 049, the plague doctor. Behind you, words echo from the hall. It's hard to make it out, but one line is clear. Do not be afraid. I am the cure. What the fuck is that? I don't like the sound of that. <laughs> SCP-049 is elusive and will show up when you least expect him to. He is an intelligent human-like being capable of normal speech. You would assume that he is one of the more friendly SCPs, except 049 fully believes that you are infected with a disease known by him as the Pestilence, and will attempt to cure you, which, as you can assume, leads to your immediate death. The cause is unknown, we just know it is facilitated by direct skin contact and will promptly lead you to being reanimated into a zombie-like creature. That is a little threat due to his lack of speed. Ironically, 049's touch should be treated as a sort of plague itself. In the presence of 049, armor or thick clothing should be very effective from allowing direct contact. But as mentioned before, it is extremely elusive, appearing randomly as you would try to escape during the game. A very theoretical approach we could use against 049 is his intelligent, almost obsessive behavior with the pestilence itself. No one truly knows what exactly it is or how it is contacted. However, it seems 049 only is hostile to those it views as infected and requiring his cure. In one of his official voice logs, he states, My cure is of little use on dead flesh. Meaning, if there are corpses that he himself has not killed, 
I am led to believe 049 may view them as a lost cause and therefore leave them be. So acting as though you are no longer alive via causes that isn't his touch by say, purposely missing a gunshot, then acted as if it was pointed inwards, then not moving until he has passed by, could be a viable strategy for getting past 049. If you've made it this far, don't pat yourself on the back quite yet. The worst is yet to come. You make a break for the entrance zone, and along the way, you find multiple researchers with the same idea. But before you can say a word, something familiar drops down from the vents. Ooh, ooh. What? Who do you think? Oh. In the panic, you jump back and blink, and just like that, the entire room is cleared. All of the researchers are dead. Only you and a tall statue-like creature remain in the room. What the? What is this? Let's go, dude. Oh, okay. Oh, oh my God. Panicked, you run backward and slam the door, separating you from it. But before you can do anything, the floor beneath you turns to an oozing black substance and you are grabbed and pulled in. You have just become stuck between SCP-173 and SCP-106. SCP-106 is a grisly looking old man capable of phasing through walls and ceilings and bringing its prey into his own pocket dimension. SCP-106's pocket dimension gives him complete control. In fact, he is so confident that you won't escape that he doesn't even chase you immediately, giving you time to escape through various corridors, throne rooms, and even this World War I like trench area with a giant rotting birth creature flying above. That happens to be my favorite entity in this universe. Overall, it'd be difficult for the average person to escape this realm when entered. But if you are able to escape, there is a 9 out of 10 chance that SCP-106 will break off his chase, giving you time to escape. As for SCP-106 himself, I would recommend using his lack of agility to your advantage. Although he can walk through walls, he isn't necessarily fast. He is attracted to sounds of pain, as it can be used to lure him into recontainment in the game. So if you are really cruel, you could always injure guards and or researchers or class D, then get as far away from them as possible while SCP-106 tortures them in his pocket dimension. But say you should find yourself stuck in his pocket dimension yourself. The biggest threats seem to be the trench bird from before and SCP-106. SCP-106 becomes cocky and will stalk you in his pocket dimension the trick is to move as fast as possible, making quick yet careful navigations along the paths until you are able to find a way out. The trench bird, however, will force you to look into its eye if it can see you, which wouldn't be so bad except looking at this creature will immediately begin to kill you. So use a piece of clothing or any cloth material as a blindfold, then quickly run your hand against the side of the trench to navigate to the eventual exit. This is effectively the best way of avoiding eye contact since the bird will crane your neck up towards it when it flies overhead. Other than this, you can only hope you escape SCP-106. Oh, and one more thing, it is rumored on the SCP wiki that he has a weakness to bright flashes, so potentially a flashlight could also be used to slow him down. SCP-173 is our final and biggest threat. He is seen to appear most often and is responsible for the death of the majority of the guards and researchers around the facility. Now there are two methods that I envision being effective against SCP-173. One of them is a lot darker than the other. Taking advantage of how easy it is to contain SCP-173 is in part due to its crippling weakness of being unable to move while watched, but you need to be mindful of blinking and lure it towards a room with no vent access that it can be contained inside temporarily. My best guess would be an elevator that you can destroy the controls for, trapping it inside for a period of time, as its main method of traveling is through vent systems and opening doors. However, if this plan fails, there is another method. As you know, SCP runs off of whether someone is looking at them, 
but it is likely unable to tell whether the person that is looking at them is dead or alive. So you could take advantage of a deceased faculty member, especially a D-class, as dead bodies have no use in blinking. You could then position the body in a way that looks directly at SCP-173, effectively trapping it permanently where it stands. Of course, there are plenty of in-game methods of avoiding these creatures, such as SCP-714 being able to neutralize the Plague Doctor's touch, or SCP-1499 that can be used to disappear from reality temporarily to escape 106, or really any of the SCPs. Although, it makes me curious if 096 would chase you down or just wait for you. Questions for later. Now that you have dealt with 173 and escaped 106's pocket dimension, you will most likely end up in his containment zone, where you will find a level 5 keycard sitting on the desk. You can now quickly progress to the entrance zone conveniently that someone has already disabled the quarantine for. Since you were already in a guard uniform from before, you would definitely have a way higher chance of slipping past the nine-tailed fox, who were in very similar uniforms. Now, a lot of this is hypothetical, so feel free to let me know what your best strategy of escaping Site-19 would be. Since surviving a lot of the entities in SCP Containment Breach range from almost impossible to be careful, surviving Site-19 will be our first in our dangerous as fuck category. Now, outside the facility, you should be home free. However, for the sake of making this video more interesting, let's just say you escaped the facility on May 1st, 2021. Your worries are far from over. Little do you know, on this day, the sun would come to undergo a brutal transformation into an Apollyon class scenario known as one of the many SCP-001s, codename Windday Breaks. Any exposure to sunlight, even for the smallest second, melts your body into a shell of your former self. To make matters worse, the melted individuals remain alive and can combine with other infected individuals to form a giant blob-like mass of melted human flesh, one whose only goal is to expose more humans to sunlight and add to the pile. Now this to me sounds like a horrid mix of the second Maze Runner and Bird Box, and the logical solution to this would be to stay inside and go underground. However, that's too simple of an answer for me. So I wanted to integrate a more fun answer. The site of SCP-087. 087 is a seemingly infinite stairwell housed beneath a school campus, one that is almost impossible to reach the bottom of due to the insane nature, as well as the horrific entity known as SCP-087-1 that we will go more into later. During the original exploration of 087, researchers conducted four explorations. Most ended in either the D-Class fleeing back up or in their death by 087-1. However, in the redacted fourth exploration, the team of D-classes discovered a strange door. Inside was an odd, unexplainable field, with a little girl who had been trapped waiting for a body to return to, which I don't know the full story to it, but all I know is it's some messed up spirit shit. Now, you're probably wondering, why does all this matter to SCP-001? Well, in the case of when day breaks, sunlight kills, so being as far away from sunlight as well as SCP-001-A would be ideal. And what better place than a stairwell that infinitely goes deeper and deeper? Now, there is still the problem of sustenance, and this part gets extremely hypothetical. But since when is it not in these videos? If you remember the door I mentioned before, if you think about it, a unexplained underground field would be the most ideal living environment. One that you could easily begin to grow crops and use it as a sustainable home base. One with only minor traces of vengeful spirit girls. But, of course, there is still the issue of 087-1, a pale, white humanoid entity that sort of resembles the rake. It is unknown whether it is killable via traditional means, but I know one thing that could. Simply testing your chances against attacking 087-1 rather than running like so many did before could prove easier than attempting to fight the literal sun. So knocking it down a couple flights of stairs or simply pulling it into the direct light of 001 would definitely spell an end for 087-1 and make 087 way less of a threat. When day breaks, while there is a solution to it, it's still almost impossible to survive in the long run. So I'll be placing it in the almost impossible category, followed up by 087 being in the be careful category. And the only reason I did that is because compared to Site-19, 087-1 is pretty easy to deal with, as he's only one entity. Another massive threat to humanity 
would be the existence of SCP-610 or the flesh that hates. SCP-610 is an intelligent disease spread via direct contact with an infected individual. The infected will first come down with rashes and cuts that eventually will die, then promptly being reborn as an abomination unlike anything else you have ever seen. They have become part of a hive mind that is 610. Originating in a village in Siberia, the flesh that hates might as well be considered a polyon, as containment is impossible. The only thing that is preventing it as a world scenario is the fact that quarantining the area as it is and just hoping that it will never spread outside of its bounds. But we're going to go over of what would happen if SCP-610 decided Siberia was nothing but a small stepping stone on its plan to decimate humanity. Now, I'm going to keep this one relatively brief because I just did a video on how to survive Vita Carnis, which if you didn't know are also beings of flesh, however this is more of a viral infection. But just to recap some tactics that will work for both, using any sort of fire or heated metal along with a corrosive is very effective against flesh based creatures. However, there is the factor of it being an infection and the flesh monster simply being a symptom of SCP-610 rather than a cure. To truly beat 610, one must stop the spread of infection to truly survive the flesh that hates. Now, as fans of my channel are familiar with, I tend to always recommend hazmat suits or gas masks for infective agents. So today, I'm going a step further. And no, I don't mean wearing medieval armor, although that was still one of my favorite comments to date. The transformation into an abomination is specifically post-mortem. So, a preventative measure in the early stages of infection could make all the difference. The symptoms include rashes and itching, then a formation of scar tissue that spreads until the victim dies, followed by this tissue gaining sentience, then mutating rapidly and randomly. The only mention is that heat speeds up the process, which explains why the human immune system fails, as a fever would only exacerbate the symptoms. But cold doesn't deter them entirely, because after all, they do live in Siberia. But with the possibility of modern medicine such as antibiotics, if it is bacterial, or some sort of antiparasitical agent that could kill the virus before it manages to kill the host. There is also the option of using non-biological agents such as machinery or armored cars as a layer of protection when fleeing or killing these creatures. But the question stands, where could you go? Well, there is another place that you could live out your life in a scenario such as 610 or 001. But before we move on to the infinite Ikea, I wanted to quickly throw SCP-610 onto our tier list. Now, even though I did say a method to survive SCP-610, even I could admit it was a bit of a stretch, but the best possible choice you have, overall, SCP-610, if they spread across the earth, would 100% be unable to survive. And before you argue about when day breaks being possibly more dangerous than SCP-610, the only reason I rated it like this is because SCP-610 is an infectious disease that spreads quickly and doesn't really have any sort of cure or reversal once contracted. Now, I absolutely needed to at least briefly go over this one because of how closely SCP-3008 resembles the backrooms. I'm honestly surprised that there is an infinite Ikea level, but regardless, the infinite Ikea, while terrifying on its own, is an isolated area that could be used in an Apollyon class scenario. Plus, logically surviving the infinite Ikea seems to be overall more of a fun concept that I wanted to go over. The infinite Ikea, for whoever is wondering, is a pocket dimension that one can enter randomly inside of an Ikea. One that, when inside, will go on seemingly forever with odd day-night cycles that are indicative of the ceiling lights. During the day, you are free to do as you please. During the night, however, the problem arises of the staff, which are humanoid creatures that appear to be similar to facelings from the back rooms, not bearing any noticeable facial features, and will swarm you and tear you apart. These staff members, like the store itself, are seemingly infinite in number, as well as similar to 939 being biologically dead, and therefore cannot be killed by any external means. I've seen many methods of survival from wearing the skin of a staff member since they are basically hollow husks, to using furniture like wardrobes to hide inside during the night, and then using the day to gather materials. My personal favorite would have to be using IKEA's garden tools as well as heavy items to break sections of the floor and making a small underground section to sleep, while rugs are placed above you and even adding a coffee table over it for an extra layer of protection to make sure that you are completely disguised with all the rest of the decor. As much as I would like to go over how to escape for fun, 
I feel like that would be redundant at this point as I've already made an entire video on escaping the back rooms. I hope y'all enjoyed my logical approach to SCP Containment Breach. I have a feeling I'll be doing more videos like this in the future, so make sure to drop a subscribe if you enjoyed. I'd really appreciate it. Well that was quite an adventure. I'm sad to see you go, but don't worry, this doesn't have to be the last time we see each other. I got another cool video, just for you. Hurry, the video's almost over.